booktube Sarah here and welcome to my channel today I'm coming to you with my weekly reviews for June the 15th through the 21st did I get that right yes I did yay me <laughs> so I have seven books to talk about in this video so essentially all this is going to be are my reviews of all the books that I've read this week um, I will have every book listed in the description box below with timestamps beside it so you can jump ahead um, to a particular review that you want to see or what have you. Um, but yeah, so let's jump in and get started. Um, so the first book that I finished this week was The Duke Next Door by Celeste Bradley. This is a historical romance novel. Book number two in the Heiress Bride series. I believe this is only a trilogy, so I've only got one more book to read in this series. This was narrated on audio by Susan Erickson. It was originally published in 2008. Uh, average rating of 3.75 stars on Goodreads. I ended up giving this one four stars. I wasn't sure about this one going in um, because the first like 30% of the book was rather slow and there was a lot of miscommunication between the characters in this book and you know I mean I know that's a major plot point for a lot of romance novels whether they be contemporary historical or what have you miscommunication or not telling the other person something is a huge deal in romance um, it's kind of the thing <laughs> in romance but um, it was a little bit more present than not in this book. And the premise of the story, it's the story about uh, Deidre and Cal Cal uh, Calder, excuse me. And she, um, the premise of the series actually, it's about three, uh, I think they're cousins, if I remember correctly. And their great grandfather um, had, has this huge amount of money. And he will only give it to the first um, female in his lineage like it would have been it wasn't his daughters because his daughters didn't do it and that's why he did this is he didn't leave his daughters this estate it was passed on to his granddaughters and then his great granddaughters I think and it's this huge amount of money and it goes to whichever female relative of his marries a duke first and um, Deidre even though this is the second book she is the one who wed the duke first so that little bit of the plot line is sort of over, but not really. It is going to probably continue into the third book, and I'll get into that in just a minute. So the first, um, the first girl um, uh, in the first book, she was going to marry Calder, and then they, at the altar, the guy that she ended up marrying kind of stopped the wedding. You know, spoiler alert for the first book in case you haven't read it. But um, then Deidre has always, uh, D as she goes by, has always had her sights set on him. So she pretty much propositions propositions him and is like, you should marry me kind of an idea. You know, uh, your name looks pretty bad in the papers right now in the society pages because you were essentially dumped at the altar kind of an idea. And, you know, it, it's going to in a way help me too. So they, they agree to get married. And the marriage happens like within the first like two chapters of the book. So, I mean, they are married at, throughout the entire course of this book pretty much. So when she shows up at his estate after the wedding, she learns that he has a seven-year-old daughter from his first marriage. Not to the woman who left him at the altar, obviously, but um, to a woman he was married to many, many years before. And he essentially married her without telling her this to raise his daughter. Um, and that she needs a proper nanny and governess and, and, and you know, a mother, essentially, to, to teach her how to be a woman. Um, and of course, Dee is very, very upset about this because she had no idea. She isn't very old herself. There is an age difference between the two of them. I think it's close to about 10 years. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but there is a definite age gap because she was just coming out for her first season when his wife died. So it's been, you know, there is quite the, the age gap. But anyway, um, so of course, through mis miscommunications, misunderstanding, she's always been in love with him. She doesn't think he loves her. Then he starts to fall for her and blah, blah, blah you know, how romance novels work. But I really, really enjoyed the story. Maggie, which is the daughter, she was adorable. She was spunky. She was, you know, uh, uh, she was just awesome. I, I really, really liked her. And I felt sorry for her that her mother passed and she really, she's had no one. Like her father's been very distant. Um, he cares more about his factories and things like that than he does about his daughter. Although he's like, well, I give her whatever she needs. Well, that's not the same thing as giving her love and attention, right? Um, so yeah, it was a really cute story and I don't want to get too much into the plot, but there is a suitor, a former suitor of Dee's who is enamored with her um, to the point of it being a little insane and a little creepy. 
And he believes that Dee is trying to send him signals that she shouldn't have married this guy. Like, they think that she was forced to marry him, kind of an idea. And, you know, he tries to rescue her. And there's this great scene towards the end of the book, um, you know, where they're kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, chasing this kind of crazy guy to 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 get back Dee because he's he's kidnapped her. So, you know, like I said, the ending of this book really makes up for the slow beginning of it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I gave it four stars. If you like historical romance and you haven't checked out Celeste Bradley, I recommend this series. I recommend this series mainly because I've read these, the first two books, and I have really enjoyed both of them. Um, I'm not too sure about the rest of her work. Sorry if you can hear the blinds behind me. It's a little windy outside. Um, but I don't want to close the window because it would be really hot in here. And, um... So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, the next one that I finished was The Babysitter's Island Adventure by Ann M. Martin. Of course, this is a middle grade fiction novel, Babysitter's Super Special Number 4. This was originally published in 1990. Average rating of 3.78 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one three stars. This one was pretty average for me. I talked about this one a little bit last week, I think, in my weekly reads when I was uh, mentioning that I was still reading it. <sighs> yeah, I... I I have issues with this one in the parenting, <laughs> essentially, that, you know, it's fine. Don and Claudia got their certification to, to sail and take these boats out to this little island off the coast of uh, Connecticut. Um, and they took Don's brother, which is fine. They took one of um, their, their friends in the Baby Search Club, Jessie, um, her little sister, her, the parents gave permission, no problem. And then Haley, another little, I, I just thought the, the choice of the other children was rather random. Um, like what Haley had to do with anything. She's a babysitting charge. Like she's not particularly close with any of the babysitters or anything like that. I, I just found it an odd choice. And Jamie Newton, who's four years old. His parents sent a four-year-old on a sailboat with two 13-year-old girls who just got their certification. I mean, it's not like they've been sailing for 15 years. You know, I, I don't know. If, if I was the parent of said four-year-old, I don't think I would have let him go. But it's a fiction story. <laughs> so the whole premise is, is of course, that there's a there's a big storm that blows in. Now, why somebody didn't check the weather ahead of time, I don't understand, but then there wouldn't have been a story. And they get shipwrecked on this little island, and they have to survive for a few days. That part of it was kind of fun, um, you know, at the beginning, because they had supplies, because they had ha packed picnic lunches, they were kind of okay. And Claudia devised up a way to catch rainwater, which was, you know, I kind of like that, that she, even though she doesn't consider herself to be very smart, it just showed that anybody can have smart ideas, even if you don't consider yourself to be a smart person. Um, but the last day, of course, things were starting to look a little dire, and Jamie got very, very ill, um, and he desperately needed medical attention, and yeah. So, I mean, it was a fun story, not... Uh, by far not one of my favorite super specials, but um, it was enjoyable and I'm glad I read it. Um, the next one that I read was right here. And this was The Engagement Effect um, by Betty Neils and Liz Fielding. This is another contemporary romance novel. Harlequin Romance. Now I looked it up because on the, on the book itself, it says it's book number 535. So I don't know whether this was sent out as like some sort of a, a Harlequin subscription or something like that. I looked on Fiction Database. If you guys are ever interested who, who um, looking at the Harlequin or Mills and Boone imprints and you're wondering if a book's not labeled or you don't know what number it is, I know the Harlequin historicals don't label them on the outside like these ones do. Um, if you're ever curious, look on Fiction Database. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. They list every book in all of the imprints and I, I love it. It's a great resource and I use it all the time when I'm looking up these kind of books. Um, but yeah, it, it so the book itself is labeled this, but when I looked it up on Fiction Database, it's actually book number 3689 in the Harlequin Romance series. <clears throat> Published originally in 2002. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got, the, I've got a frog in my throat. Average rating of 4.07 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one three stars. It was average, it was okay, I didn't love it. Um, it was cute. The first story by Betty Neils, she has a way of writing books. This is how she writes. These are the characters she writes. I often joke, um, I've never read Danielle Steele, but my mother used to love Danielle Steele and read pretty much everything that she wrote. And then mom got to a point, we were in the, in the bookstore. This was years and years and years ago. And I said, oh, mom, look, there's a new Danielle Steele out. She's like, oh, I've already read it. And I'm like, well, it just came out. Mom's like, yeah, but her books are all the same. You just change the character names. <laughs> So I think once you've read so many of them, you kind of understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Betty Neils, from what I understand, I read a couple of her books, about a handful of them now. She tends to write the same thing. 
it's about a doctor and a nurse and you know uh, he's of a certain ethnicity and you know he's very wealthy and it takes place in the English countryside uh, they're delightful little stories there's nothing wrong with them but she definitely has a writing type <laughs> let's put it that way this one was a little off of that actually because it was a main uh, the, the, the hero in this book was a doctor and um, the woman in the story was actually a, a vicar's daughter and it was very very old-fashioned like that's and I'm not saying that in a bad way it, it was delightfully quaint do you know what I mean um, and it was really sweet I mean there were two stories in this book it, it was a hundred it was 250 pages of large print you guys like it, this took me nothing to fly through both stories and I really thought that the Betty Meals book uh, story in this one the first one I liked was was my favorite out of the two um, the engagement effect by Liz Fielding was cute I mean it's not terribly um, you know memorable it was a it was a marriage of convenience kind of an idea where she marries her boss um, that one not as memorable but definitely the Betty Meals story stuck out at me if you get a chance to read it if you've never read Betty Meals and you want something really quaint very old-fashioned very English country kind of book check out her work I know Harlequin has republished all of her backlist I'm pretty sure all of her backlist uh, for ebook so definitely go and check it's the best of Betty Neal's collection I mean she was prolific for Har Harlequin so definitely give them a shot if it's something you think you might be interested in the next book that I finished this week was His Declaim by Brenda Jackson this was a, another contemporary romance novel book number four in the Westmoreland legacy series Harlequin Desire novel number 2665 uh, published originally in 2019 this was a brand new release in June so it just came out this month um, average rating of 4.45 stars on Goodreads I gave this one four stars this is guys embarrassingly enough to say the first Brenda Jackson I've ever read and it will not be my last I really enjoyed this story I really really thought this one was a lot of fun um, so this is the story of Mac and Terry and Mac is a Navy SEAL and since him and Terry got married he has gone and served several missions overseas um, of course SEAL so he can't talk about them or anything like that you know he ends up coming home and she's kind of been running the household she's been looking after their four daughters she's been you know mother and father essentially to these girls dealing with the finances dealing with the house dealing with all the things and then he comes swooping back in after being away for eight nine months at a time and tries to not take over but suddenly you know she would tell the girls no you can't do that and he would be like oh don't worry let them do it and he admits later in, on in the book that yes maybe he's a little bit too lenient with him with them so when he arrives home at the very beginning of this book after his latest mission um, his parents are at the house and he's like where's my wife and they're like she left she needed some time to herself for a few days I don't want to get too much into what the secrets are that she's keeping um, I don't agree with the one I have a bit I had a big issue I will tell you with the one secret that she was kind of keeping is she bought a ranch well he was away she bought a ranch no that's that's both of your money it was your savings you can't make a purchase that big without telling him and the thing that made me upset th this would have totally gotten a four and a half star for me but I got I kind of got mad at Terry because she finally reveals to him that she did this like later on in the book and then of course he gets mad I mean you know it, your first reaction is like what 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 are you talking about you know like how could you spend that kind of money and she takes off and she's upset at him like how dare you be upset at him you've been holding this secret that you spent God knows how much money to buy a ranch you know not a bottle of ranch dressing a ranch with horses and stuff but you know like I, I oh, it, it really irked me just a little bit but what I liked about the story that was the only thing that kind of bothered me outside of that I really enjoyed this because it starts off in like present day and then it goes back and forth um, for a little bit for the first like little 20% of the book I would say um, with their backstory and how they met and how you know they got together and how quick their engagement was and all these things and you know and then when they finally see each other again and, and he finds her where she is this book does get very 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 hot and spicy let me tell you Brenda Jackson can write adult content very well done um, but yeah this was a really really great book I mean outside of that part of it I honestly I mean there was a lot of adult content in this book I, I it, it, tell me if you guys have read her does is that the norm does she normally include quite a bit of adult content I wouldn't know um, 
I, I found it maybe it was like, really, y you know, could we just get back to the story kind of an idea, right? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was still enjoyable. I mean, I gave it four stars. I really like this one. I have another one. Oh, that's Beverly Jenkins. Beverly Jenkins is another one I haven't read yet either. So embarrassing. I need to uh, I'll make that one of my goals for the rest of the summer to read some more Brenda Jackson and, and Beverly Jenkins. Um, but yeah, so I really, really enjoyed this one. And if you like a nice, spicy contemporary romance about a couple who is already married and dealing with, you know, the happily ever after doesn't always end when you say I do. Let's put it that way. And that's what I really liked about this one. Um, the next one that I finished was uh, Only His by Susan Mallory. Uh, another contemporary romance novel. <laughs> this is Fool's Gold book number, and I did not fill in the, the spot. I'm pretty sure this is number one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe it's number six, I think. It's five or six. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Narrated on audio by Tanya uh, Eby. Published originally in 2011. Average rating of 4.07 stars on Goodreads. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed this one. Um, uh, there was a couple in there, I think like book two and book three, that I didn't absolutely love. But now, like the triplet sister stories, I've really enjoyed. And this this one was about Nevada, which is the last of the three sisters, and her relationship with Tucker. So when she went off to university, um, her brother's friend Tucker lived in the same area. I think it was in San Diego or something like that. It was in Southern California. And her older brother Ethan is like, look up my friend Tucker. He'll show you around town kind of an idea. And she's like, well, why? I don't know who this guy is. So she ends up showing up there the one time. Um, you know, he's a few years older, he's out of university, but he's working in the area. And, you know, they kind of become friends, like she kind of becomes enamored with him. But he's in this relationship with this, with this older, like older than him, um, woman who is a very famous artist, her name's Kat. And she's from some foreign country, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly what it was. But this is all back in the past, back when they were in university, or when Nevada was in university. And they end up one night, he gets drunk and he sleeps with Nevada. Flash forward 10 years and she goes to a job interview and he's potentially going to be her new boss. So things are a little awkward to say the least. <laughs> so she ends up getting the job and so they're working together and it's their story essentially. That they are like, you know, it, it is a second chance romance in a way. He never really had feelings for her back then. He was, he was kind of enamored with Kat, but she, you know, she did back then, obviously, and, um, you know, they're kind of trying to navigate their relationship with all these other crazy things kind of going on in town. I do love the town of Fool's Gold. Um, you know, you often see those things pop up in, in like, tags and, and stuff like that that says, if you could pick a fictional place to live, where would it be? And I know everybody's like, Hogwarts or Wonderland or whatever. I'm like, Fool's Gold. I would totally live in Fool's Gold because it's the most delightful little community and I just think it's it's so spectacular. Susan Mallory did such a great job writing this little town like you can totally envision it you know what I mean? Um, but yeah this was an atypical like you know very very typical contemporary romance for Susan Mallory. Really cute. The ending was cheesy. Big time cheesy. I, I will admit it. It doesn't matter. It suited it. Do you know what I mean? Um, for those of you who have read the series, you probably know what I'm talking about, the, the wedding, the big wedding. Um, uh, but yeah, it was, it was enjoyable. I, I really, really liked it and I'm looking forward to continuing on with this series. The next book that I finished was A Sure Thing by Marie Hart. This is a contemporary romance novel, book number one in the Donegan series, narrated on audio by C.J. Bloom. This was originally published in 2016. Average rating of 3.74 stars on Goodreads. I gave it three and a half stars. This one was cute. This one was very, very, very adult. <laughs> on the steam meter on the Audible Romance package, this would be like, whoop. Um, I did read this one for the Audible Romance package, which has now been renamed. I just got the email today that it's now called Audible Escape, which is now the Audible Romance package. Um, but that's okay. Rebrand it, rename it, as long as I can still listen to all the fun audiobooks. They still have all the categories listed and all those things, so I'm happy. Um, but yeah, I am. Uh, I did see that today, so I thought I'd point that out for those of you who might have the Audible Romance Package. I will still probably call it that because that's what I'm used to calling it. It's like me trying to call Sky Dome here in Toronto the Rogers Center. It doesn't fit. It will always be the Sky Dome. Anyway, I digress. Um, so this is a um, contemporary romance story about Ava and Landon. And Ava's character, I didn't quite like at the beginning. She really, she ended up growing on me as I read the story. But at the very beginning, I'm like, I don't think I'd be friends with you if I knew you as a person. Um, she is very uptight. She, uh, uh, it's true. 
She has lists for all the things. She's now 30. And on her list, she has checked off. She has a good job. She's friend, like, you know, she's, she's great with her family. She goes to the gym and she, you know, keeps herself fit and trim. Well, good for you. Um, but now she wants to check off husband and babies and all these other things. And she has a specific type of guy that she's looking for. She doesn't want a guy who's too tall. She doesn't want a guy who's too buff and too built. She doesn't, she wants a guy who's very smart, who went to university, who has a good job, who owns his own home, blah, 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 blah. And she meets Landon, who's none of those things. He is an ex-Marine. He is tall. He is built. He is in her face in a way he doesn't put up with her crap. Um, and they have almost a hate to love relationship because he has the hots for her, but I don't think he can actually stand her <laughs> at the very beginning and vice versa. So it's very much a lust relationship at the beginning, but it very, of course, quickly grows into an actual relationship. And you know, the pitfalls and stuff that, that they go through with their own families. I love the families. Um, Ava has a cousin named Elliot and he's, he's gay and he is just delightful. They are getting into conversations on the treadmill at the gym and I was laughing out loud in my car because I'm like, I could just picture, you know, a friend of mine doing something like that with me. Oh, something about a banana hammock and I'm not going to get into the rest of the conversation because this is a, fam fran a family friendly channel, I like to think, but <laughs> I'm sure those of you can use your imagination and know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it was really, really cute. Um, I loved the, there, there's one part at the end where um, Elliot and his boyfriend are having an argument at Ava's house. And their other cousin, Sadie, is sitting on the couch eating popcorn, watching the fight. Like, it's like some sort of pay-per-view or something. It's like, not a, not a fist fight, but like a, an argument, right? Oh my gosh, it was it was really, really cute, really funny. I do plan on reading more in this series, reading the rest of them. This was my first Marie Hart, but I see she's written quite a bit. And it sounds like from reading this one that there are a lot of other characters that have already had their own books that I want to go back and read because they sound delightful. Um... This one I did read for the Audible Romance Package Challenge. I think I mentioned that. And this one was for, um, like, M Hero. I think was the, the category was Hero. And he's a military guy. So that's how it fit into that. And the last book that I read this week, you guys, I just finished it all... Well, I'm filming this on Friday, so I just finished it today. And it was Sisters of Summer's End by Laurie Foster. Um, this is a contemporary romance. It's listed as a contemporary romance on Goodreads. I would push it towards a more chiclet chiclet slash contemporary romance. Um, I did label it as contemporary romance in my spreadsheet just because that's how uh, Goodreads has it labeled. It is book number two in the Summer Resort series, published originally in 2019. It just came out like last week or a week before. Um, average rating of 4.47 stars on Goodreads and I gave it four stars. I enjoyed this one. Didn't love it. It's been a while since I read a Laurie Foster and <clears throat> I know when I was picking this one up I'm like okay Looking at the cover and stuff, I'm like, this is definitely going to be more of a chiclet kind of a book, you know, focusing more on friendship instead of just a relationship or what have you. And it still got very adult and very hot and spicy. Um, there were a, a number of adult scenes in this book, but I still feel that it wasn't typical Lori Foster. She toned it down a bit. Let's put it that way. So the premise of the story is about two friends by the name of Maris and Joy. And this series takes place in an RV park in Ohio. And I love it. I love that it's an RV park. I just think that is such a fun premise. And it's about the people who work there. So the first book was about the owner. I haven't read it yet. Spoiler alert for my uh, July TBR. Book number one is on my July TBR. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so I can go back and read that one and then go forward in the series once the new ones come out. So anyway... Um, it takes place in an RV park, and this is the story of Maris and Joy. And Joy is, like, the social director at this RV park. Like, she plans all the activities and all these things. And Maris runs um, a cafe called Summer's End. I was very confused when I first saw this book, and especially the cover, Sisters of Summer's End. I'm like, it's going to be, like, take place in the summertime at this RV park. It's going to be delightful. It actually takes place in, like, the fall into the winter. And it wasn't until I was actually physically writing my review on Goodreads, you guys are going to laugh at me, that I realized I'm like I don't understand why it's called Sisters of Summer's End it takes place in the fall and then I'm kind of like oh wait Summer's End fall hmm <laughs> it had been a long day you guys <laughs> so it does it's not a beach read per se like it's not a book that takes place in a in a in a hot summer location it does take place in the fall snow is there Halloween they go through Halloween um so anyway it's about these two friends and them becoming friends because they are 
they know each other from working together, but they're not friendly friendly. And then they start to get friendly friendly and they decide to kind of have a club for the two of them, like these two single women. And of course, over the, the course of the book, both of them end up meeting a guy. And Joy ends up meeting um, the guy who owns the drive-in movie theater that's right next to the park. And the two of them end up developing a relationship. And he's the one, you can see the little um, Labrador pupper, not, it's not a Labrador, what is it? A golden retriever puppy on the cover of this book. He finds this dog. It's an abandoned dog and he ends up adopting it. And he names it Chaos. So that should tell you something. And Joy has a five-year-old son named Jack, who is very precocious, very adorable, highly artistic. Um, and Roy, Roy, Royce? Royce. Royce falls for both him, for both the little boy and, and, and Joy and like this little family and they're adorable. Um, and then Maris has, and I'm sorry, I have to mention this. I, I can't say the name Maris without thinking of the TV show Frasier. <laughs> Quick side note, sorry, you guys know I like to tell a good story and this is the perfect opportunity for me to do so. When I first adopted my two cats, um, Logan and Goran, um, Logan who passed away a few years ago, but of course we still have Mr. Goran here. One of my choices for naming them was going to be Frasier and Niles because I was such a fan of Frasier. And my mother said to me, you need to adopt another cat, a female, that hides all the time and you can call her Maris. <laughs> for those of you who watched Frasier, you'll get the joke because they talked about Frasier or they talked about Maris, but you never ever saw her in the TV show. Anyway, sorry. Now I have an urge to watch Frasier again. Anyway, so Maris ends up having her own relationship with um a guy by the name of what was his name darren and he is like the handyman at the um at this park and she is very independent she doesn't want anybody in her life she she kind of grew up in a very very bad situation and she wants to have her own money and eventually have her own home and all these things and she doesn't want some guy getting in the way um and of course she ends up falling for him and it's it's really really cute so yes i enjoyed this one a great deal um i thought it was a lot of fun and i'm looking forward to going back and reading the first one in the series so anyway guys that is it for this video um no idea how long it's going to be uh i do like to get a little chatty when i talk about these books um but i hope that you guys enjoy me doing these i i do like you know i love watching booktube i watch a ton ask my husband that's all i watch every night is booktube with an occasional CSI episode thrown in. But I just love hearing people talk about the books that they've read because, you know, it's one thing to see a book and say, oh yeah, this is on my TBR, or this is a book I just bought. And, and you don't really know too much about it yet, even though it looks or sounds interesting. But it's not until you watch like reviews, even little mini reviews or wrap ups or anything like that, that you really get a sense of what the book is about and what people actually thought about it. So that's why I like doing these and I, and I hope that you guys are enjoying them as well. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Um, and yeah, any comments, questions, post them in the comment section below. Um, have you read any of the books that I just talked about? What did you think about them? Um, or what was your favorite book that you read this week? Because I'd love to know. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.